London, January 27, 1900. Dear Joe, Apparently we are not proposing to set the Filipinos free and give their islands to them. And, apparently, we are not proposing to hang the priests and confiscate their property. If these things are so, the war out there has no interest for me. I have just been examining Chapter 70 of Following the Equator to see if the Boers' old military effectiveness is holding out. It reads curiously as if it had been written about the present war. I believe that in the next chapter my notion of the Boer was rightly conceived. He is popularly called uncivilized. I do not know why. Happiness, food, shelter, clothing, wholesome labor, modest and rational ambitions, honesty, kindliness, hospitality, love of freedom and limitless courage to fight for it, composure and fortitude in time of disaster, patience in time of hardship and privation, absence of noise and brag in time of victory, contentment with a humble and peaceful life void of insane excitements. If there is a higher and better form of civilization than this, I am not aware of it, and do not know where to look for it. I suppose we have the habit of imagining that a lot of artistic, intellectual, and other artificialities must be added, or it isn't complete. We and the English have these latter, but as we lack the great bulk of these others, I think the Boer civilization is the best of the two. My idea of our civilization is that it is a shabby, poor thing and full of cruelties, vanities, arrogancies, meannesses, and hypocrisies. As for the word, I hate the sound of it, for it conveys a lie, and as for the thing itself, I wish it was in hell, where it belongs provided we could get something better in the place of it. But that is not possible, perhaps. Poor as it is, it is better than real savagery. Therefore, we must stand by it, extend it, and in public praise it. And so we must not utter any hateful word about England in these days, nor fail to hope that she will win in this war. For her defeat and fall would be an irremediable disaster for the mangy human race. Naturally, then, I am for England. But she is profoundly in the wrong, Joe, and no instructed Englishman doubts it. At least that is my belief. Maybe I managed to make myself misunderstood as to the osteopathists. I wanted to know how the men impress you. As to their art, I know fairly well about that, and should not value Hartford's opinion of it, nor a physician's, nor that of another who proposed to enlighten me out of his ignorance. Opinions based upon theory, superstition, and ignorance are not very precious. Livy and the others are off for the country for a day or two. Love to you all. Mark.